Thanks for the invitation, Hyperite team. My name is Frances de Silva. I work with the data productivity team at NETS. Everything about data interests me from data modeling, data visualization, business intelligence, analytics, data science, data governance. As my LinkedIn tagline says, a touch of science, but it's all about the data. As an advisor in the data productivity team, I focus on adding value through data to our customer deliveries. As an immigrant woman in tech, diversity and inclusion has always been important to me. I was therefore extremely happy to join the board for diversity and inclusion at NETS. Outside of NETS, I co-founded the first special interest group for data warehousing at the Norwegian Computer Society in 1999. Over the years, the group has matured and evolved from BI, data warehousing to BI, and then on to information management, and now BI and analytics. Our mission is to create an arena where data people meet and learn. After a good run as chair of the group for the last eight to nine years, I decided this spring that it was time for me to hand over the baton. I'm super happy and proud of everything that we as a group have delivered over the last 20 odd years, and we will continue to do so. Having a data community outside of work allows me to learn and stay informed on development in the data field. A big hobby of mine is gardening. It's not about having the perfect garden. It's about enjoying the work, experimenting with new plants and ideas for planting. Working in the garden over the summer, preparing for this talk, I couldn't help noticing the parallels between working with data and working on the garden. Data and gardens are not projects or sprints. Both are long-term investments with highs and lows. One needs to plan, maintain, protect, protect, govern, and grow them. NETS is a payment service provider, originally based in the Nordics. Today, we are a part of Nexi Group. We are a leading paytech company in Europe offering a range of services, from payment services, e-signing, e-authorization services. We make life easier by supporting in our payments, payments using facial recognition, payments using a credit card or token in-store, e-commerce payments, and authentication and e-signing for net banking, for example, or tax returns. It depends on the country you live in. All these services are dependent on data that can be personal and potentially sensitive. Today, I plan to focus on three areas that have affected our data journey, as I see it. Most importantly, was our growth strategy with mergers, acquisitions, and most recently, the sale of a business unit. Over the last 10 years, NETS has been through two private equity ownerships and on and off the stock market. Based on the business strategy, the NETS organization has evolved from decentralized to centralized, and more recently, strong product focus. Advances in technology have also influenced our data journey. We started out with relational databases, ETL, and reporting solutions. Over the last years, the focus has moved towards real-time, Kafka queues, APIs for data delivery, Hadoop, and other big data platforms. Let's start with the mergers and acquisitions and sale. PBS, the Norwegian payment company, was founded in 1972. BBS was owned by Norwegian banks. In 72, the banks decided to collaborate in creating a common platform for interbank clearing and other payment solutions. When I joined BBS in 2005, BBS had just started on the journey 
of Data David Warehouse, Data Marts, Best of Breed ETL, and reporting tools. Our customers, the banks, had access to reports in a unified portal. BBS had one data warehouse team that handled end-to-end -end data warehouse deliveries from ideation through development and into operations, and then even user support and training. Data warehouse reporting was based on a common bank hierarchy, merchant register, making it possible to report across portfolios and products. An important enabler on this journey was Norway's focus on public registers. Norway has a mandatory common electronic national population register and a company register where all organizations must be registered. At BBS, we managed a central bank register for all bank groups and branches and a terminal register for all payment terminals in Norway. Multiple factors have influenced the digitalization process in Norway. A small population, a high standard of living, vast distances, especially from north to south. Additionally, trusted public registers have played an important role in this journey. This was born after a merger of three payment companies based in Norway and Denmark. Since then, NETS has been through two private equity ownerships on and off the stock exchange. We have been through an adventurous transformation and growth strategy, acquiring companies across Europe over the last years. From a data perspective, you can imagine this has not been an easy ride. It's been a roller coaster. Plans to build a data warehouse were never good enough. Data strategies and data platforms were unable to keep up with the organization's growth. New companies brought new sources of data. Each new merger increased the complexity of the data landscape. Multiple data warehouses, multiple reporting solutions, and teams across the organization. In 2019, NETS agreed to the sale of our real-time clearing solution, the account-to-account -account payment solution in our business, section of our business. Our experience during the carve-out period, when we had to split up IT solutions that were integrated across business units, impacted the rest of the NETS organization and the organization of our data teams. Today, NETS provides digital payments and services to over 250 banks and issuers and over 700 merchant outlets in Europe. We process about 6 billion card transactions each year. Across NETS, we have multiple data warehouses and data lakes and over 20 teams delivering data and reporting across the organization. Moving on to the organizational evolution. Based on business strategy, the organization evolved from decentralized to centralized and more recently, a strong product focus. In 2010, after the merger of the first three companies, the data warehouse teams across the Nordics were merged into a BI team. In 2015, NETS kicked off the data analytics program with special funding from top management. The data analytics program evaluated big data use cases, and a few of them were chosen to be run as POCs. Among these were multiple offerings to merchants and to issuers in the battle to prevent fraud, merchant churn prediction, and a prediction model for our treasury team. Late 2018, NETS hired a chief data officer and gathered data teams into one organization. Over the next years, I headed the team for data deliveries, reporting and dashboards, the mass data team, and the data analytics team. However, late 2020, influenced by the carve-out process after the MasterCard deal, it was decided that the data teams would be split into technology between technology and the business units, merchant services, and issuing and e-security. Let's move on to technology and data. Focusing on the right data projects is vital. 
As Nets grew and acquired new companies, one of the biggest pains for the merchant side of our business was the lack of a unified merchant register. Multiple source systems across Nets made merchant level reporting a challenge. Initial attempts to bridge the gap and create common customer hierarchies to be used across financial systems were challenging. Attempting to fix custom hierarchies semi-manually was probably one of the most frustrating experiences for anyone involved. In 2019, Nets launched the Mass Data Initiative for merchant data. Since then, we have integrated over 15 different sources with merchant information. I took over the team in 2020, and my first priority was to focus on business value of this investment. We did a roadshow in COVID times, presenting what merchant mass data could offer teams across the organization. As the interests grew, more and more teams realized the potential of this unified customer mass data. Moving forward, projects and products like AML, merchant analytics, merchant profitability analysis, risk reporting are all on their way to integrating to the MBM solution to use the merchant mass data. Net started out with the merchant portal over 10 years ago to give merchants access to all their card transactions and their settlement data. This was a typical portal based on an inside out approach. After a few years, our UX team helped us design wireframes for the My Payments app to give merchants a smart overview of the business and the new insights about their customers. The team did a roadshow presenting the app to small and medium sized merchants. And the responses were amazing. Today, the app prov provides merchants with an overview of simple facts, like which were the busiest hours during the week, the percentage of loyal customers, or returning customers, the one-time customers like tourists, for example. Earlier this month, Nets launched the Pro app. Merchants will now be able to benchmark weekly sales levels against performance of competitive averages, find out their share of cons consumer wallet in their vertical, track customer loyalty and the impact of marketing efforts, get insight into the geographical regions of the customer base to plan marketing efforts, assess the channel split and how the customer chooses to interact with them and understand cross-channel behavior and optimize conversion rates. Using customer mass data delivered by the mass data management solution in the merchant app will ensure a unified version of merchant reporting and app. moving from the merchant side of the business to the card payment and issuing side of the business. Helping card issuers fight fraud to protect the card holder and the issuer is a problem worth solving. Over the last years, credit card, credit card fraud has evolved from ATM skimming to online e-commerce fraud and token fraud on mobile devices. At Nets, we have helped the police and card issuers fight fraud for the last 15 or 20 years. Fighting fraud has gone from fraud analysis based on Excel sheets to real-time fraud monitoring. Years ago, the fraud team based their analysis and detection work on a data set of about 100 data items in a relational database. Analysis of this data made it possible for the team to flag suspicious behavior and prevent fraud on cards. Today, the fraud analysts have access to most of the transaction as a Hadoop data set. Using the data lake, the analysts have new opportunities for automated fraud monitoring and notifications. At NETS, we use a neural network SCO model to detect a broad specter of fraud patterns in real time. Every authorization is scored in real time using machine learning. Over the last years, our fraud analysts have been working on a fraud ensemble model a common point of purchase analysis and multiple models to allow us to detect fraud patterns. The model provides a probability that a card 
is compromised. Every transaction is given a real-time probability of being fraudulent or genuine. The next layer consists of fraud prevention rules based on specific fraud patterns and blacklists. Transactions with a high probability of fraud will be declined. And finally, we have the monitoring rule. Based on specific fraud patterns, transactions with medium and low probability of fraud are monitored and managed by a team of fraud analysts. Token fraud is a tough one to fight. Police are able to apprehend fraudsters attempting an in-store payment using a fraudulent token by working together with our fraud analysts in near real time. Last year, when COVID hit in the Nordics, the team worked with the issuer banks to create payment statistics and insights based on bank data to help the bank navigate a situ situation that was new for everyone. Understanding the market segments and how various segments like restaurants, hotels, and airline were managing was crucial. Existing monthly statistics that some banks had access to were not granular enough for them to handle the situation as it evolved. Analysts and researchers at the Nordic national banks found themselves in a situation that was new delivering payment insights to them at a higher frequency than they normally received, allowed them to understand the bigger picture faster. It was a good feeling knowing that our team contributed in a tiny way to the Norwegian National Bank's monetary policy report. The team worked with tax authorities, delivering data to help control the compensation packages that were paid out to companies during the pandemic. Ever since I joined BBS in 2005, the team has worked with the police and the tax authorities to help fight crime. This year, I attended the Data Leader Summer School run by Karupa St. Jackson. Over 400 participants from across the globe, all looking to be better data leaders and sharing their data experiences. One of the first sessions was about the need to keep telling the data story. Working with data needs passion and perseverance. We need to keep telling the data story. Over the years, my focus has been creating this awareness at NETS and in the community at large. My team and I have participated at all the NETS hackathons with data-centric ideas. We arranged data-focused summer student projects, allowing students to work with our data, understand the value of the insights, and present their findings to teams at NETS. A few years ago, a small group at NETS started the data at NETS community, a forum for teams to share their data stories, successes, and failures at a session after work. More recently, my focus has been on creating data awareness at NETS together with the members of the Data Governance Community of Practice. Our customer offerings like fraud prevention and loyalty management are data driven. To drive development, we need a closer collaboration between data and product teams, as well as finance, compliance teams and customer journey. Earlier this year, we did a data maturity evaluation within our business unit to identify the areas that needed immediate attention and to align on a vision and roadmap for our data initiatives. After the summer, we have started working on en enabling more self-service reporting, advanced analytics, and a faster time to market for ML and AI initiatives. Moving into 2022, Becoming a part of the Nexi group, we will need to look into a common framework for data governance and data quality. Finally, data holds astonishing amount of potential value for businesses, but none of the value is accessible until it's translated into insights.
that lead to business outcome. Making the most of this wealth of data isn't just about having the right tools at the right time. Quality data is essential to deliver business value. For NETS, it allows us to fight fraud, to offer merchant analytics and loyalty management, among other things. Quality data builds customer trust. The products we offer enable digitalization of companies and societies, and they're all dependent on data. Together, we are moving into a cashless society, reducing fraud, enabling e-signing and e-authorizations to make life easier. Working with data takes passion and perseverance. And as I said in the beginning, like a garden, you have to keep working on it. I look forward to continuing the discussion after the session using the Agorify app or even at a later point of time on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening.